I'd like to show you how to load a tool onto the Panhand 245-100. We have a simple rebate cutter block, which is a CMT. It has the rebate facility on it, as well as being able to use Euro knives as well. So it's quite a nice block to set. It gives you a lot of options. Obviously you've just seen me enter the speed. We just give it a tool type, it's a combi rebate head. And that is the exact name of the body of the tool. I think it's quite simple to use that. If the uh, operative is gonna select the body of a tool, I think it's probably simpler that he's able to reference it against that. This is what it, a brief ex explanation of what we're gonna do with the head. Speed, diameter, height on this particular tool is 40. This point here explains the spacer that is underneath the tool on the shaft. So in this particular case, we're going to use a 10 millimeter spacer. So we just enter 10 there. Mm. So there's the 10 mil spacer. And the tool we put on. We take then spacers to take up the rest of the shaft. And then the machine comes with a nice pro-lock top nut. It's very simple to use. We screw this down just by hand. And then we use the Allen key just to tighten this nut. And we tighten the grub screw just there. If you notice, the, just the space of the uh, top nut there just opens up. That creates a wedge, driving the pro-lock down onto the shaft and then holding the tool in position. Okay, and once we've finished all of the inputting, we can push save. I just want to explain the correction height value. If the tool had a boss on it, or potentially the scribe cutter was below the body of the tool, we can just add the correction here. We could either add a plus or minus. It would just alter the position of the machine here. So we push save. From this point on, we have the tool loaded onto the machine. We just go to the home button. We then are given six boxes, tool, height, angle, the speed. This is a belt driven machine. So it just indicates the speed we're set at, the absolute height of the spindle shaft and the absolute position of the fence. In order to now select the tool, we just click on this little button here. We can highlight that line. It's come up in highlight in blue. In order to create a program for this tool, we just need to push this button here. There's one tool already been set, but we can adjust this now. Or we can select it, delete it, and start afresh. Having now loaded the tool onto the machine, we select the tool here. We can then create a program. It knows the tool type we need to just give it a description. For the purposes of this, uh, this demo, I'm going to just call it rebate. Okay, it's gonna be a simple rebate. It's gonna be 20 mil high. And 10 millimeters deep. Oh. We need to set the speed. The reference point, we can select top, center, or bottom. We will stick with top. And the fee rate, we will keep it two meters a minute for the purposes of this demo. We then need to save. Having now saved the, the program, we highlight it in blue. We push this button here, just confirming that this is what is in the machine. And the machine is now happy that we have the tool where we need it. It's showing 20 at the minute because we set the tool at that particular height. I can adjust that manually by pushing this action button. Okay, we can then return to the screen 
we've got back onto port uh, tool, we select the program, push return, confirm it's there, and the action button will reset the tool back to the position it needs to be in. Okay, and the height of the tool will adjust to the settings. Like so. Okay. The fence is set manually by hand wheel. We'll just turn that and you'll see that the green light there will turn red to show that the fence is out of position. We can turn the hand wheel now to the correct position. This is the target position, this is the position it's in now and if you can see the small indication there to show me the direction I need to turn the hand wheel. Maybe it's because I didn't do the action button first. Just the name there. That's the tool type. That's what we've given it. We set the speed. The speed. The height. We're going to go with an imperial size, 25.4. And we're going to have half inch, so we need to do minus 12. Minus 12.7. Okay, the reference can be set top, center, bottom. The feed unit, although we're not using a uh, feed at the present, you can use many different rates there. We're just going to stick with two, two meters a minute, and then we save. Okay, select the tool, select that button. The tool and the program is now in the machine. The action button is now flashing to suggest that the tool is not in the correct position and we can push this action button to begin the movement. Here on the bottom, the action position is here on the, on the top of the clock. We have a small icon here indicating which way should we turn the hand wheel. We just need to turn this hand wheel now to make the two figures match and we know that we are in the correct position. Indicated by green lights on, on the digital readout here and you will see on the screen. And you will see now the positions here have gone from red to green. So showing you that the machine is now set. The machine is fitted with an Agner integral fence. You're able to turn that little lever there and these little fingers just pop out and locate back onto the adjacent fence. It's a really good safety feature. It saves anybody, obviously, entering the spindle area here, any material entering the spindle area here, and the, the, the safe use, and it makes a great difference to the false fences that can be fitted to a machine. We can now turn the machine on. And you can hear that it runs very quietly indeed. The machine is fitted with a brake. And once you push the stop button, it stops well within the 10 seconds. The spindle is uh, tilts in both directions to 45 degrees. We can do this manually. We just push the minus and the action button. And you can see that the value changes. And likewise in the opposite direction. Or we can set a figure here by choosing. Again, if we need a minus, we set a minus figure. Okay. Hold on. Stop. The angle can be moved manually with the action button. in the negative or positive angles simply by just pushing the negative or plus sign on the screen and the action button. Giving you full versatility of tooling. And if you have any tooling that isn't quite right, you can always compensate through just tilting the spindle slightly.
We can also give it the given destination. If we want to put it back to zero, we simply just type in zero on the screen, push the return button, the action button, and it will be brought back to dead zero, like so. And we can reset just by simply tipping zero or any given number, return, and the action button. Like so.